Hello everyone, Moose Torn here. In this video I'm going to be going over my Spell Warrior build. Let's go over the weapons. I have the Blue Flame plus 5 with a Magic Infusion. I have the Crescent Axe. That's right, the Crescent Axe plus 5. It's actually better without an infusion. Not enchanted or magic or anything. It's just a regular path. At least from the way my stats are, it's better without anything. I got the Dranglic Shield <laughs> plus two because I don't have any more Twinkling Titanite and I did not feel like farming anymore. I have the Witch Tree Branch, branch plus ten. I have Third Dragon Ring, Ring of Blades plus two, Life Ring plus three. And the Ring of Knowledge, because my intelligence isn't super high, and the little boost helps me out a little. I'll also switch this out for Ring of Soul Protection, if someone invades me. My armor is Mask of Judgment, Dragon Rider Armor, Dragon Rider Gauntlets, and Bone King Skirt. My spells are... Great Magic Weapon followed by Strong Magic Shield and Great Soul Arrow. I usually use those when I have the Blue Flame out, I'll use Great Magic Weapon and Strong Magic Shield. I'm really not a big fan of buffs, I think it can be pretty cheap, but with this build you kinda need them. I don't know if it's my stats aren't high enough or if these weapons, even after the patch, just don't do that much damage. So. So let me know if you guys use them and what your opinions are on if they're needing a buff or not. And I will get started with the PvP. So if I do this combo, I'll tend to buff before my opponent gets here, and then bow, and then buff the shield. He's using the crystal magic weapon, so he's going to be doing a lot more damage than I am. But I'll be able to block 100% magic damage because I use strong magic shield. That's another reason why <laughs> it's not a big deal that I only have <laughs> that I only have my shield at plus two. Because I do have that buff. Oh no. See the shield? Major magic blocking. If you can actually get it up, that is. <laughs> that joke is so old. Ooh, he just whipped out Artorius out of nowhere. I thought he had a staff. That's what happens when I think instead of just fight. Alright, so this time I'm going to be using the Crescent Axe. I'll use it unbuffed so you guys can see what kind of damage it's doing by itself. I do have the ring of blades plus two, so sort of by itself. So we got 579 from a backstab. Not a whole lot there. I just got whapped by the pursuer's ultra great sword, it appears. 734. So you get more damage <laughs> from that running attack than you do from a backstab. Got my buffs up. Let's get a bow going. Fake out! That did not work at all. See that shield block? Yes, indeed. Strong magic shield is very helpful. Dance of fire, not very helpful. Did I do six, six, six damage? You know, as I mentioned before, it's only plus two, and you've seen how good it is. Strong magic shield is definitely worth picking up for a spell warrior. Definitely worth trying. I'm gonna switch to the Crescent Axe. 
I like having the Crescent Axe as a secondary weapon because it actually does mostly physical damage. So if you're fighting someone who has a lot of magic defense, you can switch to the Crescent Axe and do predominantly physical damage. Pretty cool. And we're fighting the Grand Lance. I wanted to show you guys the one-handed moveset for the Crescent Axe. It's actually the same as the two-handed, or excuse me, it's the same as the one-handed moveset for the Dragon Slayer's Crescent Axe, which is an amazing moveset. It's just really fast. The running attack is so fast right there. The rolling attack is real fast. It's really easy to chain. The two-handed attacks do a lot of damage. And that combined with the range of the Crescent Axe is very powerful. Apparently not powerful enough to overcome the Grand Lance, though. <laughs> Fighting a guy with a Macedon Halberd. Staff of Wisdom, looks like he might have some of Valon's armor on. Yeah, so he's actually going to be... ...weaker against... Physical damage, I believe. I can do that too. We both totally missed the spin attack. The one-handed running attack's really good, too. Oh, I thought I still had strong magic shield. That would have not ended up very well for me, had I tried to block that. Ooh, the backstab. 527. Another thing that's bad about the Crescent Axe is that it has to hit with the blade. It has to hit on that sweet spot. Otherwise, it's gonna do like less than half damage a lot of the time. I think I did hit him with the sweet spot there, though. But here's another guy that looks like he's going to be actually weaker against physical damage as opposed to magic damage. I only did 340 with the swing there. Um, let me try a soul arrow here. 284 with that. Well, I'm not doing too bad either way. I think just the, the lion mage robes do not have that much defense. Really, at all. cool thing about the blue flame is you can really catch people off guard with those casts, which I'm sure you've already know, but looks like he has the witch tree branch too. His buff's stronger than mine though. Ooh, he has the dragon great curve sword. That thing is ferocious. He's just rolling right through my tags here. I hit him. Looks like that was actually in the sweet spot for 392. 402 there. Ah! <laughs> I just stood there. I didn't know what he was doing. But I should have known better.
least you can play that game, sir. Now it's my turn to catch him off guard, apparently. Looks like we're fighting a thief slash pyromancer. Is that a twin blade? That'd be cool if it was. I haven't fought a twin blade in quite a long time. And it looks like the stone twin blade. We are in luck. I always thought the twin blades were a little bit slow. Obviously, once you get it going, they have multiple attacks in a row that are fast, but the initial swing speed is pretty slow. Why would you jump? Crazy pyromancy right there. Fire snake. That's definitely the best pyromancy probably of all time. So here are the stats if you guys were wondering. I didn't get to get as much intelligence as I would have liked, but I think overall the stats are pretty decent for what they are. I really like the way the armor matches together. That's one of the, the pros and the cons about this build because it took a whole lot of Twinkling Titanite to, to get everything maxed out. So this is Moose Torrent. I'll be back with another video for you guys shortly.